At the 2022 Formula 2 feature race at Silverstone, we saw some zero out of 10 defensive driving by Roy Nassani, which led to Dennis Hauger receiving a puncture, skidding across the grass, launching over a sausage curb and into the halo of Nassani's car. Opinions about driving technique aside, we have to ask the question, how did this scenario come about? How is it possible that a racing car can be launched off the floor and into the path of another car, and for that matter, off the floor at all. Sadly, this incident is just another on a long list of incidents caused by, or made worse by, these pesky yellow and orange boys. Just as I was writing the script for this video, Enrique Chavez launched his LMGTE car, the 6000 Monza, skidding across the circuit on the roof. At the same spot in 2021, David Vidalis went flying into his teammate, Dino Beganovic, in Formula Regional Europe. Speaking of Monza, Alex Peroni famously went flying at Parabolica, did a double barrel roll, landed on the catch fencing and broke his spine. Abby Eaton broke her spine slamming over a sausage curb at Cota last year, and if you think any of that sounds bad, you should see Sophia Flosch's crash in Macau in 2018. Uh, spoiler, she went flying into a building. Oh, and she, she also broke her spine. Now, in case it wasn't obvious, all of these things are bad. So if all of these accidents are caused by sausage curbs, it really begs the question, why does the FIA keep attaching these yellow snaky boys to tracks? Overall, are they a bad thing, or are just a few scary incidents making them seem bad when actually these curbs are doing more good than harm for motorsport overall? Well, to answer that question, let's look at the pros and cons. Cons. Yeah. So, as we've discussed already, one of the major criticisms of the sausage curb is the yeet. Why? Because it's dangerous. Racing cars are designed to be extremely safe in front, rear and side impact crashes, and they're even pretty good when they roll. They are not, however, designed to fly up and down, and so when they do and slam back into the floor, it causes some major issues. Mainly for the driver's spine. Overly harsh punishment for cutting. Obviously, the intention of these curves is to stop drivers running wide on corner entry or exit in an attempt to widen the corner, or to stop them just straight lining over the apex, all of which could, in theory, give you a time advantage. Okay, yeah, that's fair. The track is the track, and you have to stick to it. But if you do cut, which is not always intentional, particularly on corner exit, should you get chucked around, thrown offline, maybe thrown towards another car, risk damage, risk, you know, a broken spine? Seems a little harsh, doesn't it? Surely, a little time penalty would be better. Damage. Speaking of damage, these things do have a little habit of breaking cars apart when they slam into them, slam over them, grind along the top of them, etc, etc. There's nothing less satisfying than watching an exciting quali battle, wondering who's going to get pole, than having that all just fizzle away because someone runs wide, gets some floor damage and has to return to the pits all because they rode a sausage. We want to see drivers on track, giving it their all, doing the thing that this sport is about racing. Formula 1 is a racing league, not a try not to destroy your car league. Punishing fighting. While injuring drivers is by far the worst thing about these curbs, for me, the second worst thing about them is the fact they take away opportunities for cars to go side by side and fight. Yes, obviously cars are meant to fight within the white lines of the track, blah blah blah, but you know, when you're doing 200 miles an hour, that can be tricky. Two cars come up to a corner, side by side, trying to outbreak each other. One gets it slightly wrong, runs a little deep, goes on wide, gets to rejoin the track, catch up and fight another day. This is good stuff. This is what we like to see. If, however, someone who accidentally runs deep gets damaged, has to fall back because their lap time gets worse, no more fighting to watch, sucks for you. Let's take some famous moments from the last few years and see how adding sausage curbs to those corners would have changed them. Vettel and Hamilton, Canada 2019. Trying to hold on to the lead, Vettel outbreaks himself into turn three and runs over the grass on the inside of turn four. As he rejoins the track, he slides to the right, closing the gap for Hamilton to come through. Vettel goes on to take the checkered flag first, but receives a highly controversial time penalty and gets demoted to second, giving the win to Hamilton. Obviously, if you're a Vettel fan, not good. But this whole moment was controversy. It was drama. It was Formula One. If turn four instead had a sausage curb on the inside, how would this moment have been different? Vettel may have bounced into Hamilton, taken them both out, or may have flown straight over the track into the wall, giving him 18th place instead of second. Still some drama, yes, but nowhere near what we actually got. And how about another moment, Hamilton and Verstappen, Brazil, 2021. On lap 48, the 
two are side by side heading down into turn four. Both cars run wide. Verstappen holds on to first and controversially does not receive a penalty. However, what this means is the two cars continue to fight for another 11 laps until eventually Hamilton does pass Verstappen on lap 59. And we get this timeless image courtesy of Toto Wolf. Now, what would have happened if there was a sausage curb here? Hamilton may have bounced over it, picking up some floor damage, dropping back on pace, not being able to fight for the win anymore. Sounds less exciting, doesn't it? Cars aren't meant to leave the track, obviously. But if someone does leave the track as part of a larger battle, but then both cars can continue to battle because neither are damaged and neither are stuck somewhere, that sounds pretty good overall for the sport, if you ask me. Okay, okay, so that's some of the cons of sausage curbs. How about the pros? Uh... So there is one, and that's the large curbs give a very real, very immediate consequence for cutting the track. Time penalties are all well and good, but sometimes you have to get a few warnings, or sometimes they just don't even get given at all, etc, etc. Big curb, you cut, you die. Simple. This kind of begs the question though, can't we just have a better system? for detecting when cars go over the track limits. As far as I can tell, the system now is just a bunch of people looking at cameras to check if the cars cross the line. That doesn't sound very robust. We can do better than this, right? Tennis has Hawkeye, football has goal line technology, cricket has whatever the hell they call it in cricket. It's basically the same thing. If so many other sports can implement a highly accurate automated system to detect if something goes over a line or not, why can't F1? Well, okay, there's some technical limitations. Football only has to look at two lines, one each end. Tennis has to look at four. Cricket is... Mm, okay, I know most of you don't watch cricket, so I'm not going to explain it, but just... There's a ball. There's a ball. It, you have to know where it goes. But the point still stands. Formula One, in comparison, does have a lot of things it needs to keep track of. Tracks have anywhere from 10 to 27 corners in the case of Jeddah, and you have to look at the entry, apex, and exit of most of those. Each spot needs a panful of cameras, call it at least three for a basic triangulation system. So we're talking minimum nine cameras per corner. That's anywhere from 90 to 243 cameras per track. Minimum, maybe. I've I guess. That, along with all the other tech to calculate positions and output decisions, sounds a little complex. But then again, this is Formula One, the most technologically advanced sport in the world. Every car already has more sensors than that on board, transmitting data all around the world. Every time Lando Norris rides a curb in Australia, an engineer sitting back in McLaren's data center back in the UK can see how much G-Force went through his anus in a split second, like that. If they can do that, they can definitely work out if the wheels went past a big fat white line. With criticism coming in from multiple drivers and the Drivers Association as a whole, not just recently, but for years now, why has F1 not done something sooner? Well, the answer to that, and the answer to really every question in Formula 1, is of course, money. Lovely, lovely money. Yeah, a little criticism is bad, but it is cheap though. Why would Formula 1 splash out millions to develop a new detection system when it could just not do that? It could just not do that. And not doing it sounds really cheap, doesn't it? Well, sadly, Formula 1, this is a safety issue. Always has been, but people are starting to realize it now more and more. The time has come for Formula One and motorsport in general to remove sausage cups. Formula One cars are now lower and stiffer than ever before, which makes the dangers of these curbs even more dangerous. The drivers are avoiding curbs more this season given the new cars, but it's only a matter of time before someone runs over one accidentally and we find out just how bad the consequences can be. Rip them up, find a new way to police track limits and we can all get on with racing and make sure that a few broken spines is the worst thing to come out of the track limits era before we have to add a death to that list. As if, as if broken spines wasn't bad enough. I have been Mr V, let me know down below what you would do about this issue. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And until then, stay safe, protect your spine, and I'll see you guys later.